Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns they'll be selling in their September of 2015 premiere auction. And I had one here that has, well, its provenance directly to a rather famous American gun maker, a fellow named John Browning, or J.M. Browning. Now, um, I figured this would be a cool time to talk about some of this guy's personal history and development and, you know, some details of his personal life that a lot of people may not know. So, uh, J.M. Browning was actually born in 1805 in Tennessee. He was, uh, as he approached puberty, he was an apprenticed, uh, apprentice to a blacksmith and showed his interest and skill for firearms actually very early. Uh, he was only 13 years old when he manufactured his first gun and uh, quickly went from being an apprentice to setting up his own shop. Uh, he moved to a little town called Quincy, Illinois in 1831, where he set himself up as a gunsmith uh, and later expanded that business into blacksmithing and uh, locksmithing as well. Of course, all three of these are pretty, pretty similarly, pretty closely related fields in the 1830s. Now, in Quincy, um, Browning had had a chance to interact with a bunch of Mormons who were in the 1830s in the process of being evicted from Missouri. They didn't get along so well with the uh, the local Missouri natives, and so they, they were coming across the border into Illinois, and Browning had the opportunity to to learn, meet them, learn about them. It's not really known exactly what sort of contact he had, except that within a couple of years, by 1836, he actually moved uh, up to a town called Nouveau, Illinois, which was at that point basically a religious boom town full of Mormons. Um, they thought they had a place where they could live outside of Missouri, away from the old problems. It turned out they ended up not really getting along with the local folks there either, and ended up ejected and having to move west. Well, at that point, at some point within here, Browning had uh, converted to Mormon, the, the Mormon faith, and he decided to go west to Utah with these Mormons. Now, along the way, he set up shop a number of times progressively farther west. He would set up a gunsmithing business and, and work, uh, manufacture and repair guns for the various other Mormon settlers who were in the process of making this pretty significant trek west to Utah. So during this whole time, Browning wasn't just repairing guns, he was also designing his own guns. And frankly, he came up, he, he was responsible for some very early iterations of some pretty interesting designs. One of them being the harmonica rifle, or as he called it at the time, the slide bar repeating rifle. And that is what this gun is an example of. Uh, when we say, today we would call this a harmonica rifle, and we say that because it has what looks kind of like a harmonica of chambers. In this case, five chambers. This is, I believe, a 54 caliber rifle. You would preload each of these chambers, and uh, you'd have a five shot repeating rifle. We'll take a closer look at the rifle itself here in just a moment, but I want to finish off with some of Browning's personal story. So he'd invented this in the 1830s. He was making these, he was repairing guns. Finally, by 1852, he gets to what will be his final long-term home in Ogden, Utah. He was a, one of the early polygamist Mormons. He had three wives and a total of 22 children, um, eventually in Ogden. And in fact, one of his children, one of his sons, would go on to be very interested in firearms as well, and apprentice to his father at a very early age, and uh, showed a, a, sig you know, a really quite remarkable talent for firearms. Uh, for those of you who maybe have been watching this a little bit confused by John Browning doing this sort of thing and being born in 1805, I should probably point out that uh, the, the rather talented son was in fact John Moses Browning, who would go on to be the John Browning that we are all intimately familiar with today from the 1911 and the Browning machine guns and this, uh, frankly by 1900 three quarters of the sporting rifles on the market in the United States were John Browning's designs. The fellow who made this harmonica rifle was actually typically known as Jonathan Browning and he was John Moses Browning's father. So you know the Browning that we typically think of he did have an advantage in this that it ran in the family. So why don't we take a closer look at, at this example of Jonathan Browning's handiwork. So the one marking on this rifle is uh, right there, J.M. Browning, 1853. This would have been just after he had moved to Utah. This was certainly not the first harmonica rifle he had made, but it would have been one of the, the first guns he made actually from Utah. Now if you 
take a look at Rock Island's catalog page. They have some information on the provenance of this particular rifle, which is uh, pretty significant. It goes back through the Flaterman collection and also through the collection of an early uh, Indian Wars Medal of Honor recipient who owned it, uh, frankly, not that long after Browning manufactured it. So if you're concerned about whether or not this is actually the real deal, and frankly you should be with something that claims this sort of provenance, that's some good research to check into to satisfy your uh, concerns. Now, as a harmonica rifle, the idea is, let's lay this down here, we have five shots here. Let me go ahead and take the harmonica out. So this is our magazine bar. Got space for five percussion caps, and we have five chambers in here. Now you'll notice all of the chambers are countersunk. There's a mechanism in the rifle that we'll see in just a minute that cams this block forward so that this countersink presses into a recess in the barrel face, thus acting as more or less a gas seal. So right here, the inside of the barrel face is uh, beveled, and that's what your, your chamber countersink presses into. This is actually a very simple mechanical action. We have this pivoting lever. When it is up in this position, you can see that this face is flat. That allows the harmonica bar to move easily. And then when you rotate it down, we have an extension that acts to push the bar inwards. So I can put it up and then drop my harmonica bar in place. I then line up one of the percussion caps push this down, and that levers the magazine bar into place. I can then fire that chamber, then I recock the gun. It's interesting to note that there is no half cock on this design. It is uh, nothing and ready to fire. Now I push that lever, oops, oh, it's a little hard to do holding this thing up. This has a very heavy barrel. All right, let's try that again. When the lever is up, then I can move this to the next position. This is all manually indexed. Then push it down, fire, lift up, index to the next one, push down, fire, and so on. Remember, this was not intended to try and win any military contracts or go into mass production. This was the product of an independent individual gunsmith shop. And it was intended for folks who simply needed a rifle and they wanted more than one shot at a time. So if you're using this as, say, a hunting rifle or a defensive rifle on the frontier, you don't necessarily need to be out there being you know, the super fastest, baddest gunslinger around with an automated indexing system, especially given the cost that a system like that would have added to a gun like this. It was a lot cheaper to make something very simple that gave you 80% of the same effectiveness by simply manually indexing. And, of course, if you wanted more firepower, I'm sure Mr. Browning would be happy to sell you a couple extra magazine bars that you could keep loaded on your person. So this is a really cool piece of American firearms history. Um, you know, it's in some ways, it's even more interesting than having a piece made by John Moses Browning, the, the famous legend, but to actually recognize the contribution that his father had. His father was a, a very talented and inventive gunsmith and manufacturer, all in his own right, uh, although he has obviously been completely eclipsed by his son. So this piece is coming up for sale at Rock Island uh, here in September. If you are interested in it, you should check out the link in the text description below. You can take a look at Rock Island's uh, photographs, their description, their catalog page on the gun. And if, uh, if you think this ought to be the centerpiece of your own firearms collection, well, you can place a bid online or, frankly, for a gun like this, you should come down here in person, check it out, and uh, participate in the auction live. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I didn't annoy anyone too much with uh, my obfuscation of exactly who I was talking about at the beginning.